this video, I'll do a little bit of a walkthrough of these 3D text that I created. And I think it's pretty cool, although I think there's still something missing. But I'll show you how it is so far so that you can copy it and then experiment yourself from there. It's not going to be a complete step by step, like you add this keyframe, create these and that. I'll show you each node because it's not that complicated. And I'll assume that you already know the basics of animations for these. All right, let's open this in Fusion. So we have these, first of all, a 3D text. Now, I moved these, but you don't have to do it here in the transform section so that on the renderer, it's a little bit bigger. Otherwise, by default, it's a little bit smaller. But you're going to transform node and then not have to do these 1.2 and then negative uh, size right here for the Y. All right, so the keyframes right here were like these. We have a rotation for the X and Y for the beginning like this, just a simple rotation. And then also the scale keyframes for the same and just a simple spline curves right here on those keyframes right there as well. You can press F and then T and then modify the splines if you want to do that. So that is basically the whole animation for the text. Then it still rotates a little bit, but then we have the scale out and the rotation out again as well. For the shading, by default, we have these checked. So you want to uncheck these, set up the first colors right here. And then the specular basically adds a little bit of a tone. I think it has to do a little bit more with the light, I think, when you modify that. Then we have the bevel, and I chose a little bit of a darker color for that. And the specular, I think, is the same right here, pretty much the same. For the text 3D, if you don't know how to extrude the text, all you have to do is on the main text right here, Go to extrusion and then increase the extrusion depth. So for the pivot point, what you want to do is by default, it's going to be at zero. So it's going to be like this. And all you want to do is try to, right now we have the rotation set up right here. So it's, not, it's a little bit weird. By default, it's going to be like that. And then all you want to do is move the Y. So that's right in the center. And then you also have to adjust the Z so that it's in the center of your text as well that way your rotation is going to be a little bit more natural and it's going to not look that weird i also added this rotation here for the characters it's not that complicated we have the characters just a little extra that i did later on but it's not that big of a deal you don't need to have that if you don't like it still worked without it all right that's it before we continue since we're already talking about text in this video make sure to check out the text effects pack that i just released at text effects swathy.com let's continue with the video now we have the merge node which is a basic merge node here we're going to need to see the light by default it's going to be just solid so go up here and change to shadows and also go to your renderer and change the enable for the shadows and the lighting otherwise it's not going to render if you don't have those two checked all right we have these merge right here and we have both lights we have the first one that i added was a directional light and i just put it in front of the text and it doesn't really have a direct effect like these spotlight right it's basically just like a normal light and you can adjust the position but not really um and you can adjust the position of it right here just angle it so that it comes down to your text in that way then for the controls i actually didn't really change anything but you can choose to do so if you want you want to make it less intense or something like that. Now, then after I watched this, I thought, well, it could look interesting if I added a light behind a text, right? So that's what I did. I added this spotlight right here. And it, and when you take a look at it from the camera, you can only barely see the effect of this spotlight right here that's coming from the bottom, right? And I put it right here at an angle as well. And also our text is also angled a little bit, right? So that's why we have that weird look right here of like why it's a little bit tilted. So we have these spotlight and for the spotlight, you can choose the color of it right here in the controls and then play around with the intensity and the cone and all that stuff. You can play around with the different colors as well and try to match it with these if you want. I just chose to do it so that it was a little bit of a different color because I thought it looked interesting that way. All right, and we have that so far. It looks okay. Then we have the texture. For these, it was just an experiment that I thought, okay, let me tr try something. I first tried with the fast noise and it looked a little bit weird. So then I thought, why not just try to use the same thing for it as well? 
and the effect that it has is really really subtle you can take a look here for example if i disconnect that then we have that disappear obviously so it's just like a small minor detail that you add to it and if we deactivate that we can see the effect that it has not that big but i thought it looked interesting but the thing that i did here was by default the channel is set to um let me see alpha so that was looking a little bit weird although it looks interesting but i, I, I couldn't really change the color from black or i didn't try to at least right so then i set it up to be on hue as well and then i didn't actually i don't think i changed the low for the hue but maybe i did and then you can play around with these as well and see how that looks and see if you like the way that that looks so you connect that render as a background texture and also the mask for it otherwise it's not going to really work the way that we want it to work right we have that there then i try to play with the film grain and i did something similar we have the background and also these coming as a mask otherwise it affects the whole screen um but we're not really seeing it right now if we press grain only we can see that and then with the mask activated it's only affecting our text which is what we want and here i use a film grain preset that we have uh, which is a 16 mm 50d but you can play around I, I don't see that big of a difference between them i just chose a random one basically and then i changed the composite oh no i kept the oh i played around with the composite mode as well I didn't like the end result, so I left it at, op at overlay. And then we did the opacity just so that it was not that big of a change. And this is an effect that is pretty, pretty subtle. You have to really come closer to the screen to see it. But in motion graphics, there's a lot of people that really like to put a lot of grain on their stuff. So I thought, well, let me experiment to see how it looks. And it looked okay. Now, this next thing is what I think made it look really, really cool, which is this texture pop. Let me show you. It adds, and this is a studio only feature, I think, that depth to it. You can see how I have this little highlight from behind, then it's a little bit darker. It just makes it come alive, I think. And I made it really strong. And these three things are the, the default things. I didn't change anything right here. If there's advanced, there's probably some more controls, but I didn't play around with that. I just chose to make it really strong, added more details uh just play around with it basically and then you can modify the actual like shadow midtones and highlights if you want to adjust them yourself as well you see how the highlights affect our effect right here it looks pretty cool it's a really cool and interesting effect you can even play around with the rgb values as well here if you want to play a little bit more now i really like these right here because right here we have the surface it looks a little bit more metallic that's what i was trying to achieve a more metallic look but i adding this texture pop mixed with that texture right here just made it look really really interesting especially in this section right here that we can see those little colors moving around all right and then we have a soft glow just to add a little bit of an extra attach an optional step and then the last thing that I added was like, okay, let me try to add light rays because why not? And it ended up looking all right. I think it looks pretty interesting. You can make these soft glow a little bit less glowy, I guess. If you don't want it to be affecting it that much. Let's see. Otherwise, it just has that weird effect, right? So you can play around. Oh, how does this look like? All right. Okay. Look at that thing that did right there. Ooh, or right. I need to play around a little bit more with this part, but I think that looks interesting. But yeah, anyways, we can play around with the gain right here on this soft glow and adjust it to get to a point that you like. And this soft glow doesn't have to be the last step. You can actually add this soft glow right after your light rays, and that will have a little bit of a different effect as well, I think. But then the light rays is uh, has a bunch of different things as well i this is probably the first time that i actually used it i think i've used it in one plant project once but then i never used it again this was a couple of years ago so we have these light rays that we can actually angle them the way that we, you want them to go right uh so i just chose to be to make it go so, so sort of like towards the camera it ended up looking interesting and then the last thing is that you were done basically oh the last thing that makes it look interesting as well i also played around with the stop motion but 
I think without it, it looks a little bit better. The last thing that you can add is motion blur on the render node right here. And this will make it render a lot slower, but it has a little of like an interesting detail right here when it's like moving. Well, that's what motion blur is for, right? And then I think it looks interesting. You could probably experiment with these and try to use these for like uh, your the intro of like uh, any type of reel that you're creating. Probably it's going to be a little bit of an attention grabbing element, I think. Now, if you like this video, make sure to check out the text effects pack that I just released. It doesn't have these 3D style of titles, but there's 35 different titles that you can use to create and add text compositions to your shorts, reels, or pretty much any video that you are creating. So make sure to check that out, or you can also just check the link in the description. And yeah, that's it for this video. Bye.